We start with a site-specific concrete gas turbine package, main foundation, and then add the concrete pedestal that supports the electric generator and generator enclosure. Then the power control enclosure foundation is added. Monuments are cast into the main foundation to receive scribe marks that locate the axial and transverse unit center lines and the A and B unit datum lines. Accuracy of this layout is essential since all equipment is set relative to these lines. The drivetrain assembly starts with the installation of the electric generator. The generator enclosure with the generator cooling air supply and exhaust silencers, filters and weather hoods can also be installed at this time. The gas turbine enclosure base A with its engine base attached for shipping is carefully positioned with respect to the axial unit center line and the A datum line. The engine base is detached from the gas turbine enclosure base and is aligned relative to the generator drive flange. It is then grouted with anchor rods secured after grout cure. The exhaust enclosure base A is added, followed by installation of the exhaust diffuser and collector box. The gas turbine enclosure roof and exhaust enclosure roof are added next for the A engine. The process so far described is repeated for B engine. Next are added the walls and roof that form the transition area between each exhaust enclosure and the generator enclosure. The combined combustion and ventilation air inlet silencers are added next. The lower portion of the filter house support structure is added, followed by the ventilation air inlet filters. The filter house support structure is then completed and the filter house is installed. This process is repeated for Unit B, followed by the overboard bleed air silencers, the gas turbine enclosure ventilation exhaust silencers, and the upper roof that completes the enclosure of the ventilation exhaust fan compartment. The power control enclosure is installed and the various auxiliary skids are installed in their proper locations relative to the axial unit center line and the unit A and unit B datum lines. The cable tray that brings power and control cables from the power control enclosure to the units and skids is installed and all interconnecting cables and piping are installed. Next, all walkways, platforms, stairs, and ladders can be installed. As we move to the other side of gas turbine enclosure A, we can see fire protection cabinets and the unit engine handling platform for engine A, with its rail system that aligns with the rails that are part of the engine base. The rail system, with its associated dollies and related tooling, is first used to facilitate the installation of the flexible drive coupling. The power turbine is moved into place next, using its installation dolly. Once in place, its permanent support legs, keel pin restraint, and temporary stabilizers hold it in position so that the dolly can be removed. The gas generator is moved into the enclosure by means of its dolly. The dolly is adjustable so that the gas generator may be aligned with the power turbine and the two are bolted together. The forward engine struts are installed to support the front end of the combined power turbine and gas generator assembly and the installation dolly is removed. Engine manifold legs are added and the temporary shipping support structure is removed, allowing the installation of the rearmost power turbine cooling air manifold. The overboard bleed expansion joint can now be installed, as well as the nose cone and the upper and lower sections of the engine removal spool. The large enclosure access openings are closed by rolling the plug doors in front of and then back into their openings for a positive seal. We now move to the area adjacent to the electric generator enclosure. Prior to removing the generator for servicing, the side wall of the generator enclosure, the neutral cubicle, the generator enclosure fire protection cabinet, and other miscellaneous items are temporarily removed. Now the electric generator can be raised over its anchor rods 
and slid out of its enclosure to allow for rotor removal. The process is reversed to reinstall the electric generator. An overall view will allow us to see the configuration of the complete unit with modular vertical exhaust stacks added. Alternately, an SCR-CO catalyst exhaust system with a single exhaust stack arrangement is available to meet project-specific requirements. Lastly, we can see how the FT4000 unit can be part of a complete power generation facility.